Hi everybody, welcome to my Cook at Home series with Tonya at Cooking on the Bay. Today we're going to be making a lovely homemade mayonnaise. Now mayonnaise has a reputation of being quite tricky, but actually if you follow these steps you'll find that you make it very easily. And as part of my Cook Real Food program here, we make a lot of mayonnaise and so it's a good thing to conquer and it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to make, which seems like a long time. I know some people make them in food processors and their Maggi mix, which is pretty foolproof. The food processor doesn't work so well, and uh, I'll tell you why as we go along. But doing it by hand is a very easy way of making sure that your emulsion stays together. And in, an, in a mayonnaise make, or in mayonnaise making, the important thing is to keep the emulsion together because you're trying to join two uh, mixtures that, or substances that actually don't like each other and they don't want to be amalgamated. So what have we got? We've got two eggs. I make a two egg one. And in a two egg um, mayonnaise, we have about a teaspoon of salt, about a tablespoon of lemon juice, a teaspoon of mustard, which is um, a part of the emulsification process. And uh, white, well, I use white pepper. And we've got uh, 375 mils of olive oil. Don't always use the 375 mils, but I always measure it out so I know how approximately how far I'm going to go. I have a little bit of water in case we want it to. Sometimes the mayonnaise actually gets too thick. The oils that I like to use, and I've experimented with many different oils. This, the poly is probably my favourite. I think it's nice and light. It is not a light um, light olive oil in the way that it's got no fat. It's a light flavoured olive oil. So this one it says light flavoured olive oil. You don't want it extra virgin olive oil I find makes a mayonnaise. It's far too olivey, it's got too strong a flavour and I don't think you want the mayonnaise to be dominated by the flavour of the olive oil. The other one that is exceptionally good also is Cobham Estate and I often use half and half of these. This again is light flavoured. It's not light olive oil okay so there is quite a distinction there so we'll start off by cracking our eggs and we only want the egg yolks so we're going to use two yolks the egg whites we reserve for various things that we might do putting into our baked ricotta or what have you some desserts so there's one egg and I always freeze my egg whites in little containers, such as I've just put that into. And as you know, I always separate my eggs in three bowls. So this, the egg yolk bowl being one, this one being two, and then the final container being three. So that they don't, if one happens to be faulty or we break one, it's not going to be disastrous for the whole process. So an important part is actually the whisking of the egg yolk in the very beginning, okay? So we're going to put with the egg yolk uh, mustard, a nice Dijon mustard, and I put in a, a generous teaspoon. So I'll just put that there. And I start off with the whisking of the egg yolk and the mustard. Now, in the egg yolk and the mustard are two important emulsifiers. In the egg yolk, it's the lecithin, and in the mustard, it's the polysaccharides, okay? So, we're going to whisk those together. The more you whisk these together at the very beginning, the better the emulsion of this mixture takes to the olive oil, and so it makes for a better emulsion. So, I will also add to that a little bit of salt. I know that it's going to take about at least a teaspoon of salt. We're going to add a tablespoon of lemon juice to add extra flavour as well. And we may add extra lemon juice at the end. Um, we'll just see. Sometimes I will add extra lemon juice. Sometimes I might add some water if it gets too thick. So, so with the slow, you can, oh, before I start, you can see that I've got my bowl sitting on my wet X, my cloth and a tea towel and I've wrapped the tea towel around and given it a collar so it makes it very easy for the bowl to stay put when you're doing this by yourselves you need to be able to have this when you're doing this by yourself you need to have it so that 
it's not going to wiggle around and, and fall over. So now this is the important part, Michael, if you'd like to get in close here. So when I start dripping this oil in, it is a real drip drip. Okay? And it is important to keep on whisking as hard as you possibly can. So you can see how much oil I put in there, and you can see that I incorporate all that oil before I add any more oil. Now we will probably add about half of this 180 mils of oil before we start pouring it in more quickly. But you'll see and hear, you'll also hear the emulsion getting thicker. Now it is a bit of a an exercise for your arm, but that's good. Sometimes I do swap hands. But this is the most critical step of the whole process mixing the first little bit of oil into my egg and mustard. It takes about 10 minutes to do this whole process and if you think that's a long time and oh, I can't be bothered, I'm going to do it quickly, it's not a good idea to do it quickly because what happens is that it separates and if it separates you have to start the whole thing again. So, it's much better to do it slowly to begin with. Regard it as a little bit of mindfulness. Lots of cooking is about slow, taking it easy, relaxing while things are searing in your pan, while you're browning mushrooms, sauteing onions. You can see that that's starting to, to thicken up already. Now that is because we whisked well in the beginning and incorporated those emulsions together before we started adding the oil. Sometimes we might want to add uh, some garlic paste to this, a couple of cloves of garlic, peeled, finely chopped and made into a paste, makes a beautiful aioli, the French Provençal garlic mayonnaise. You can also infuse some saffron in a little bit of boiling water to get some colour and then add it to this at the end and replace a little bit of the lemon juice with the beautiful saffron coloured liquid so you get a pinkish reddish mayonnaise. Once you're at this stage, it's what we are now, you could afford to add it more quickly. However, I don't like doing that because I think it's easier to take your time and follow the rule of going slow, but it's most unlikely that at this stage, this mayonnaise is going to break, separate, collapse. However, there are methods of restoring it if that happens. And my most preferred method, if it separates, which frankly, it's never happened to me, so, um, I haven't had to do it myself, but I know that this works because other people have done as I instructed. So if the mayonnaise separates, you have to start again. And how you start again is by you start with one egg yolk, just one egg yolk, and instead of adding this oil to the egg yolk, you are adding the separated mayonnaise mixture, okay? So instead, you just stop, crack open the next egg, use the yolk, and slowly pour in, as I'm pouring in the oil, slowly pour in the cracked mayonnaise mixture. This mayonnaise is looking absolutely unctuous, really beautiful as you can see. It's rich and creamy with a lovely colour. It's got a beautiful flavour of the lemon juice and just beautifully um, salted perfectly with, and flavoured with the pepper. 
Um, this makes a lovely base for so many things, beautiful with all your salads. And it's also very nice as a seafood cocktail sauce. I add some Tabasco to it, our homemade tomato sauce. Um, I add some anchovies mashed up and um, some cream and it's got, it goes perfectly with your prawns and whatever seafood you may like to have. So do try making this. It is easy as you can see. The secret is the, the, well, the better you be, uh, whisk it at the beginning, the better it is. So good luck and bye bye for now and I'll see you next time in my Cooking on the Bay kitchen. Bye.